Hello dear students, in this video we are going to discuss about third process of charging substances by static electricity that is charging by induction. Before learning about charging by induction, we will discuss about process of earthing or what do you mean by earthing. So what is earthing? It is nothing but connecting electrical appliances to the ground that is earth is known as earthing. Why do we have to connect electrical appliances to earth? The answer to that is earth acts as reservoir of charges. So earth can accommodate lot of electrical charges within itself and whenever necessary it can give those charges back to the substances. Why do we need earthing to the electrical appliances? So we have written here earthing means giving passage of excess charge in substance to flow to ground is known as earthing. So suppose I am having this object which, which is carrying positive and negative charges. When I connect this object to ground that is I connect it with conducting wire to ground charges can flow through this wire to the ground whenever it is needed and this is known as earthing. We use earthing in our household appliances as well, the heavy appliances which requires excess current. For example, alternating current that we use in our houses for devices like mixer, juicer, oven or refrigerator etc. We use earthing at household to save electrical appliances from excess current flowing through them. What will happen if excess current flows through these appliances? Every appliance has a capacity to achieve the value of current or to bear the value of current. If value of current exceeds that specific limit, then there will be huge current flowing through the device per unit time and that will damage the device. To avoid that, we connect devices with Ardhi. For example, here we are having this plug. You can see that we are having three connections over here wherein these two are at the bottom and this one is at the top. This top connection is acting as earthing connection. So whenever I plug this socket in, this is the one that will connect to the supply first and if at this moment there is any excess current flowing through the circuit, then it will come in contact with this wire first and which will take that excess charge to the ground. This will save our device from breaking down due to excess current. So this top connection is earthing and these two are live and neutral. So I hope you are cleared with what is earthing. In earthing, we allow charges to flow to the ground. We will require process earthing in charging by induction. Now going to charging by induction, here we have written steps for that. In step 1, I have written that when a charged object is brought close to the uncharged sphere, charge polarization takes place. You can see in the diagram, we are having a sphere, metal sphere, which is on an insulating stand and we are having a negatively charged rod, which is brought closer to the sphere. Sphere is electrically neutral as it has 5 units of negative charges and same number of positive charges which will cancel out each other. When you bring this rod close to the sphere, there will be repulsion between negative charges of the rod and negative charges of the sphere. So these negative charges on the sphere, they will be polarized on left hand side that is away from the charged rod. This assembling of charges on extreme ends is known as charge polarization. Now you can understand that if I brought this rod even more closer, these negative charges, they will assemble themselves at the edge of the sphere, but from there they will not be able to go anywhere away from the rod. So what if I want them to go away even more, even further than the rod for that? we will go to the process of earthing. In step 2, we have written that when earthing is done, negative particles will have passage to move to the ground. So in first step, they did not have any other way to go away from the rod. They could just assemble themselves on the edge, left edge of the sphere. 
But now, if I connect this sphere with a conducting wire to earth, that is, I connect it to ground, then if you bring this rod even more closer, these negative charges will have a way or a passage to go away from the rod due to repulsive force. So these negative charges will now enter in the wire and from there they will enter into the ground. You can see that as of now there are 5 units of positive charges which are same in number as that of in step 1 but there are only 3 units of negative charges as some negative charges they have gone to the ground from the sphere because of repulsive force coming from the rod. Now as two units of negative charges they have gone into the ground there are greater number of positive charges than negative charges and hence sphere can be considered as positively charged sphere. Here you can understand two major differences than charging by conduction which we have seen in previous video. In charging by conduction, we were physically touching charged object with uncharged object. But in charging by induction, we do not make a physical contact between charged and uncharged object. They are still away from each other. Second difference is that in charging by conduction, rod and the sphere, they achieve same charges at the end. But here you can observe that rod is having negative charge but towards the end of the procedure sphere is positively charged. So if I want positive charge on the sphere the rod should be negatively charged. Alternatively if I want negative charge on the sphere then the rod should be positively charged in charging by induction. In next part of this same video we are going to discuss about charging the sphere with negative charge by the same method charging by induction. Hello students, in the second part of the video we are going to discuss about charging sphere by negative charge in charging by induction process. In step 1 we have taken two objects, one is a metal sphere which is standing on insulating stand and it is electrically neutral as it contains same number of positive and negative charges. Another object we have taken is positively charged rod which contains excess positive charge. In step 2, we will see charge polarization when this charged rod is brought closer to the sphere. As the rod comes closer, positive charges will ripple positive charges present in the sphere and these positive charges will, will arrange themselves on this end of the sphere away from the rod. Now in step 3 we will connect this sphere with earthing wire. Now as we know we always say that only negative charges move. So here we will not say that positive charges are rippled by positive charges present in the rod and they will go in the ground. Instead, we will say that negative charges will be attracted by excess positive charge in rod and they will be entering in the sphere. So here we will say that as sphere is connected to earthing wire, negative charges will flow from ground to sphere. I'll again repeat, we never say that Positive charges will go out from the sphere because positive charges never move. Instead, we will say that negative charges from ground, they will enter in the sphere. We have also indicated the same procedure by arrow head over here, which is going from ground towards the sphere. Now, as sphere contains excess negative charge, it will be overall negatively charged sphere. So we understood here that if I want sphere to be negatively charged, the rod that we take in the start should be positively charged. In the previous part, we discussed about sphere being positively charged at the end and there we had taken negatively charged rod. So at the end of charging by induction, sphere and the rod, they possess opposite charges. Please note about the same. Now, Another question that they ask in your IGCSE paper is that 
if i want this sphere to be charged at the end of the process then i should cut earthing wire first or i should take the rod away from the sphere imagine if you take the rod away from sphere what would happen is that as the rod is taken away whatever excess charges that sphere had due to this rod they will again flow back to the ground so these negative charges which are coming from the ground they will again go back to the ground and the sphere will be again electrically neutral so the correct sequence here should be we will first cut this earthing wire so that whenever the rod is taken away these excess charges will not have any path to go back to the ground so in the sequence you should write that first we will cut the earthing wire and then we will be taking this charged rod away from the sphere so this is the process charging by induction i hope you are clear in charging by induction that we use earthing wires so that excess charges will either flow to the ground or they will flow from ground into the sphere like in this case we also have understood that in charging by induction there is no physical contact between charged object and uncharged object throughout the process also at the end sphere achieves opposite charge as that of in the charged rod so here we are cleared with charging by induction thank you